So I'm in Defeated Creek with my family and Marissa's on a girl's trip. So I've got Hensley here. I'm gonna show a lot of the video equipment I use and also not just what the equipment is, but also, you know, how I like to use it um, when it comes to filming for YouTube. If you've ever thought you wanted to vlog on YouTube, or if you just travel and you want to know what kind of cameras have worked well for us, hopefully this will help out a bit. These are the things we use the most on a daily basis. DJI Phantom 3, standard. Our GoPro 4 Black, this is a waterproof housing case. This clamp is awesome. We pretty much leave that on the GoPro. Uh, G7X. Uh, this is just a battery charger. So this is our 70D. This is what we use, uh, man, like almost all the time. It's bulky, it's a little bit heavy, but I absolutely love this thing. <laughs> it's got a Shure VP83 microphone on it, shotgun microphone. It's one of the awesome things about this microphone we've got. It can pick up, it's probably picking them up pretty well. Um, they could be, your subject could be 10, 15 feet away. And that happens a lot with us when we're vlogging because uh, my wife or Hensley or something, she's on a bike or she's off in the distance and we noticed uh, it's really nice to have that shotgun microphone to pick up things in the background, even though it's kind of annoying to have tapping in the background. <laughs> uh, it's also handy to have the shotgun microphone if you're, uh, say, in a city or something with a lot of noise around you. If you've got the wide angle lens and you've got the shotgun microphone, you can hold it really close to you and uh, it'll primarily pick up your voice. It'll at least, it'll do a lot better than the G7X or something that doesn't have a shotgun microphone. The big downside to the shotgun microphone is when I'm standing behind the shotgun microphone, it doesn't pick me up as well. So the Gorillapod is awesome. Um, I can use it as a tripod. I can wrap it around benches. I can wrap it around playground equipment. I can wrap it around some robot looking thing uh this is the high-end one you could save i don't know 30 40 bucks if you got the one a step down from this if you wanted to um but this one's stronger it's longer and uh that's really good for us as far as getting shots that are farther away having that longer gorilla pod on it we've got an ultra wide lens on it a 10 18 uh, millimeter lens on it you hear that boat whoa right away. i don't want okay here comes a downside the 1018 wide angle lens with the boat coming. I'm gonna zoom in. Oh, that's all the zoom I got. So, G7X, this is an awesome camera to start with. We used this camera the first four or five months we've logged, and uh, it's got a flip up screen where you can see yourself. It's got a 4.2 zoom. You know, our Canon with the 1018, it's not even a two time zoom on it, so the zoom on this is way better. And it's actually, I mean, it's decent and low lot. So, there's a lot going for this camera, there really is but there is no external microphone and it's not an ultra wide lens so when we got situations where we went on say in a boat a ship an rv um, or like i said if you're just in a city a loud environment that ultra wide is coming really handy uh, compared to the g7x but we do still carry this with us because when you power it down it's super thin and you can just pop it in your pocket if we're in a restaurant or somewhere where um Marissa gives me that look that she'll be embarrassed <laughs> if we're using our giant, our giant 70D. Um, we'll carry around this G7X and at least have something with us. But here's that zoom on the G7X. So the zoom is way better on the G7X than the 70D. There's that boat. But as far as quality of uh, the video itself, the G7X, Honestly, it's it's right up there with the 70D. There's not that much of a difference between the quality of the video itself. It's just not as wide and the autofocus on the G7X, it is isn't as good as the 70D either. The 70D is our go-to camera. Here's the difference between a G7X and the 70D as far as the wide angle lens. G7X, 70D. G7X, 70D. As far as filming with the uh, 70D, um, I will squat down a lot, but I've actually started doing a lot of shots where I hold it upside down. If I hold it upside down, I can get really close to the ground with it. If there's something cool in the background, I'll do an upward angle while we're down on the ground with uh, Marissa and Hensley coming toward me or something. It'll get what's behind them from a really low angle. It almost acts as a stabilizer if I hold it upside down and I'm walking alongside of something. 
uh, it keeps it pretty stable at the same time as well so it's a pain in post edit to go through and uh, flip everything <laughs> vertically but uh, it's worth it for the variety in shots and the, and the stabilization you get sometimes by holding it a different way it's a big boat It's like, that's not, I don't think that's how you use that. So when you got the 70D on a selfie stick with a wide angle lens, you really don't have to hold it out that far. You ready to go swimming? So one of the more popular options for vlogging on YouTube, and of course travelers especially, is uh, your GoPro. And we've got a GoPro 4 Black. The main draw is it can shoot 4K, but Honestly, I never even shoot 2K. Everything, almost everything I do is 1080p. Your cheapest option for getting started with a camera would probably be like a, a used GoPro 3. And the cool thing about the 3, I think the 3's got this, this as well. Um, the 4, you can't see it real well in here, but uh, you can buy an adapter for the GoPro and you can actually hook up an external microphone with a GoPro. So we got the GoPro as our first camera and we were really hoping it would be enough, but uh, it just wasn't it, it was it didn't do enough in low light situations and that's when we went we, we kept our gopro because we knew we'd still want it for like when we go into water and things like that but that's when we also bought a g7x in low light situations the g7x just whooped it whooped the gopro <laughs> so and also you don't get a flip screen of the gopro too but that's not a huge deal to me and you get a zoom of the g7x let's go twinkle toes We've also got this clamp that we keep the GoPro on almost all the time. Um, this is a generic one. I think it was maybe like half the price of the GoPro one, but it can, uh, you know, it can bend to any direction you want it to bend to, and the clamp is super strong. I've clamped this to the top of the car even. Of course, like most things we buy, we try to make them dual purpose. So, you know, not only is it a clamp, you know, it also acts as a selfie stick when you need it to be a selfie stick. The other main thing I'll use the uh, GoPro for is most all of my time lapses are with the GoPro. You say bye-bye, water. Bye, boats. See you boats. later. Honk, honk. Honk, baby boats. Baby boats? It's called a <laughs> kayak. If you could only buy one, the G7X, or a GoPro with the extra accessories, which one would you buy? I think it depends on what kind of filming you want to do, what your priorities are. Neither one is the perfect camera. No camera is the perfect camera. The video quality is such a big deal to me. I think I would just go with the G7X. It just The end result is just video that's a little bit more personal. Um, and I think you can tell a little, very, a little better story with a G7X than with a GoPro. You can tell a story with a GoPro, but it just doesn't give the same feel as the G7X and quality of the G7X that you have. So this is my atomic backpack. When I first got my drone, I needed something to carry it around. I looked around Best Buy and everything was like $300 plus for a backpack. So that seemed pretty crazy to me. <laughs> if I had a $2,000 drone, maybe, but uh, I'm not going to spend $300 on a backpack for a $480 drone. So I found this one on uh, Amazon. You've got uh, the front pocket unzips and I bought one of these little uh, grid organizer deals. I don't carry a tripod, but if you had a tripod, it could hook into this little pouch in the bottom. On the back, you've got these storage compartments. Right now I've got it set up, and this is usually the way I leave it, but I've got room for my drone where it can go in right like this. Let me take the blades off real quick. You do have to take the blades off on this one, but there's very few packs I've seen where you leave the blades on. They do make them, but man, those get really huge. I wanted a backpack that could still look like a backpack if I had my drone in it. It's got a little support strap right here. I don't know that I'd put a $2,000 drone in here, but this one's been fine so far. Cool. The controller can go there, blades down in here. And then the battery's in it right now. I could store the battery over here. I've still got a whole other compartment down here for the battery charger. And then it just zips up like so. You've also got two mesh pockets on each side. Um, I'll usually keep my G7X batteries, things I need to get to quickly on this pocket on this side. Got a strap here. I don't usually use this bottom one unless we're going long distance. 
There's the bag. Yeah, I'll keep my batteries and stuff here so I can slip it around like this right here and quickly get out, you know, if I need to get out something while we're moving around. So I'm not gonna be that guy that says, yeah, here's all my video equipment, but you don't need that to make great video because the equipment does matter. It does help to have better equipment. But I will say, don't wait until you have this equipment to start making great video. You can still start making video with whatever you have. If it's an iPhone 6, if it's a GoPro, if you got a G7X, just start making video and you'll quickly learn what you need, what you don't need, what fits your style. I started off just making playful videos with music and playing around with what worked for our family for our family videos because I found out we weren't really watching our family videos that much and so it was kind of cool to turn them into uh, to have little music montages in the middle of them and stuff like that and then and then I started to see that why not just go ahead and do that with our you know with our travel videos and we'll have that for us and then it's just kind of multiplied into this definitely don't use the equipment as a crutch start where you are, do the best you can what you have. You'll quickly learn how to grow into what you need to make the videos you want to make.